Then there'd be a hum. And the hum would get louder and louder. And to the point where it broke apart everything that I was or knew. It was just this it just got louder and louder until you just had to surrender to the sound. And then you were there. I would get a warm, full feeling, a golden feeling in my chest before it went to my head. And I'd feel this warm rod about an inch and a half in diameter start growing up inside my central channel. It would come up and sort of slow, warm up my chest, go up through my head, and slow down and put tremendous pressure in my sinuses behind my eyes, and slow down. It start to grow and distend the skin behind my forehead about one inch, behind my hairline. And when it had, I was afraid it was gonna pop my skin a few times, because it was a very physical feeling. About an inch and a half, two inches above my skull, when it popped through there, then the psychedelic trip would start. I thought I died. I saw the white clouds, uh, you know, the uh, Renaissance white fluffy clouds with the gods and the angels and all that stuff is what I saw. I thought I was dying and going out, but I did take a quick look at Cindy and a quick look at Rick because I had my eyes open and they were both there watching, looking very calm. And I go, oh, that's really good news. My body looks fine. So I didn't know whether it was my birth I was re-experiencing, my death which was yet to come, because I, I know that time crumbles. The linearity of time is totally meaningless in these states. You are at the Godhead, the point where all time folds in on itself. More and more layers of my humanity start peeling off. Finally, the last you know, the, almost the last layer, and I can't even describe what it is, but you have, at some reaches way in there, there is like the last layer of that which you, which defines you as a human being, and it goes click. You are no longer a human being. In fact, you're no longer anything you can identify. There is no concept of time. It was so disorienting. I was so terrified. I have never in my entire life been so terrified to be blasted out of my body, to leave my body behind, to be going at warp speed backwards through my own DNA, out the other end, into the universe. And so I went right into this white light. As soon as I went into it, I lost any sense of being different, any sense of what I was doing, past, any sense of future. Uh, it was absolutely blissful and euphoric. And I just felt like it wasn't I. I was everything. I was the light. There was no sense of separation, no shadows, no differences, no past, no future. It was all present and white and yellow light. Then I felt myself falling out of this light. And as I felt out of it, I could feel the light was like a glow, like the sun with flames coming out and lapping out. And I could already start to feel this tremendous separation. I reached across and it was suddenly I'm in the universe in this huge void with these beings on the other side. And I put out my hands in this incredible rainbow of pink light went between me and these entities. And I was trying to make it be like a white light, but it was this incredible pink light, this energy of love that we, this capacity of love that we as human beings have that I was trying to just send to them. This meteor-like trip through, through the infinite space of the interior consciousness is up pops the picture puzzle pattern door. And I'm now whizzing through this sucker like if it was nothing. It just, I'm flying through it. But now I know what the picture puzzle pattern door is. 
the picture puzzle pattern door is the farthest reaches of your humanity. This is the doorway into the what defines you as a human being. When you go past that, you stop being human to a degree. And the further you get past this point, the further away you go from being a human being. But right here, this picture puzzle pattern door is everything. It's everything. It's what defines you as a human being. This is your, this picture puzzle pattern door is you. This is like the actual core of where all of reality is emanating from. This is where meaning comes from. Symbols were pouring out. They were intertwined. Every symbol or and letter and in every language was pouring out of this point. And I looked around at my environment and I was trying to absorb everything to understand, but there were all of these machines or structures or things that that I had never seen before, that I had no idea what they were. I was like a caveman in a computer lab. I didn't have any idea, but I knew in my intellectual awareness that this was a very advanced civilization or life forms or, or whatever they were. They, they were so far advanced from, from what we know here on Earth. There's one state of and it, I call it the, the hobby horses. And they're interlocking, reticulating, uh, vibrating hobby horses. And I use that, that's what they seem like to me. They interlock and they form a, a visual pattern that seems infinite in scape. And then you're on the inside, outside, inside, every side. And so it's less possible to use, um, you know, words start to, start to escape you. The texture of the space was very much like an animated Mexican tile. It seemed to be hyper vivid in color, in the technicolor sense, but also very clay-like in earth, you know, like with an earthen pointing towards earth, but not really being of earth. And there was no I. There was just a sense of a witness being suspended in this incredible vaulted space, like a cathedral made uh, out of stained glass of all imaginable colors, unbelievable brilliance and saturation of color. Just this amazing pattern in this dome, this gigantic dome. It was felt like you know the size of the the of a small planet. And there were these winged beings. I don't remember exactly what they were, but were like angels, something like angels, that were majestically kind of flying through the space. But there was something about the quality of how they were flying that was unique. I'd never seen anything like it. It was like, I don't know, the sense of uh, another realm that was there. My sense was at, at some point there was this implicit sense, this is the divine realm. This is the divine realm. And it, it was not like a thought, but it was like this implicit kind of grokking recognition. It was all very, very impersonal until I got to the space where I realized that I was in the area where souls await rebirth. And I was there, and I had been there so many times before. I recognized it, and this incredible transcendent peace came over me. I have never in my life ever felt such peace. Everything was stripped away. Every hope, every fear, every attachment to the material world was completely stripped out of me. I was free to just be the essence of a soul. After the medicine wore off, uh, there is that familiar sensation of kind of coming back into the body. And I do remember that. That was part of almost all of those experiences of kind of coalescing back into sensory awareness and a sense of having a body and of that becoming a little more substantial and then say, oh yeah, here I am. And I live in a body and I'm okay. So Laura removes the eye shades and I ask, 
Not really with my eyes open quite yet, I ask, how long was I gone? Because I needed to know. And Rick chimes in like 15 minutes. For a moment, I'm shocked. I'm like, you know, mind, you know, has to try to catch up because now the whole cognitive dissonance of the experience has to, has to catch up. I was gone 15 minutes. A thousand years of experience in 15 minutes. Well, to say the least, it, it was profound. It, it was, it was profound.